Hey, good morning, everyone. Welcome to everybody who's joining us online and, the, and you who are here this morning. Uh, glad to have you with us. So uh, we're going to go head right into worship, but we want to first say happy Mother's Day to every mother that is joining us this morning. We're, we love you. We're thankful for you, and uh, we're going to celebrate you today. So, uh, but before we get going on that, let's, let's celebrate God. Let's celebrate who he is and how amazing he is. And oh man, I mean, he's the one who made moms. So he's got everything that makes a mom a mom in him, you know. Mm. And so we can celebrate that, that, that part about him today. And so anyway, but let's pray and then we'll worship. So Jesus, thank you that you are, <laughs> that you are moving, that you are working. Jesus, you, uh, I just felt like the Lord said to me this morning, uh, that though the world feels like it's not moving very fast, I've been actually moving quicker in this time. I've been moving speedily in this time. So Lord, we thank you for moving like you are. And we want to just surrender to what you're doing and what you're speaking and the work you're doing, wanting to uh, move into us, the, the molding and the shaping, the reforming of our minds, of our wills, of our emotions, of our bodies, God, that we would just come into alignment with the King of Kings. Thank you. With, we come into alignment with love himself. Thank you, Jesus. We worship you. We glorify you. We lift up the one who is worthy of every praise, that at that name, every knee bows, every tongue confesses and speaks that you are Lord. There is no other. We worship you. We glorify you today. In the name of Jesus, amen. amen. Hey, let's all stand and worship this morning. And as always, be free in your expression of worship. If you're at home, just praise the Lord. Let it rip. Praise the Lord. We're all joining together, one in spirit. So let's, let's worship him. You know, I, I've come to think of our church as the choir. Because we're all here to minister to the king, and we're kind of like leading the choir, but we're all in the choir, right? And we're all worshiping the king. So I just, I, I just call you guys the choir during worship, because we're all like going to minister to the king. And it's so good to see you all. Oh, yeah. I'm so happy. <laughs>
and in your presence all our fears are washed away they're washed away You know that comes when we all come together but i know you're out there in in facebook and youtube land and you're cheering so hallelujah let's give god a shout hallelujah Praise to god. the king hallelujah. we you, glorify jesus. your name jesus. Yes. jesus we just join with the saints around this country and around the world and we just say glory to your name jesus you're worthy hallelujah <laughs> Sing a hallelujah in the presence of my enemies. I raise a hallelujah louder than the unbelief. I raise a hallelujah. presence of my enemies I raise a hallelujah louder than the unbelief I raise a hallelujah my weapon is a melody I raise a hallelujah Yeah. Praise the hallelujah. Praise the hallelujah. 
wanna sing in the middle of the storm. Louder and louder, you're gonna hear my praises roar. Up from the ashes, hope will arise. Death is defeated, the king is alive. Sing a little louder. you just see all this stuff and you're just like <sighs> but then you just put the worship on Amen. and you start singing this in your house Amen. and other songs and then you know the fear lifts the anxiety lifts the all the crazy lifts and you're just like Jesus you are you're rocking man <laughs> two-edged sword two-edged sword our two-edged sword is the word of God and a lot of worship songs include the word of God imagine that bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship his holy name. Sing like never before, oh my soul, I'll worship your holy name. Let's sing it again. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. His holy name, sing like never before. Oh, my soul, I worship your holy name. The sun comes up, it's a new day dawning. It's time to sing your song again. Your heart is kind for all your 
Yes, Lord. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Oh, oh my soul. Worship your holy name. Sing like never before. Oh, my soul. I worship your holy name. And on that day, my strength is failing, the end draws near and my time has come, still my soul will sing your praise unending, ten thousand years and then forever. Oh, 
at your feet They bend their knees Creatures On the earth below Bow before Oh 
Jesus, we praise you. We glorify the King. We rest, too. We rest before this Holy One. Because we're accepted. We can come boldly before the throne of grace with confidence. We rest because of the blood of the Lamb. Jesus. Thank you that this holy king is also our heavenly dad. Praise you, Lord, that we're accepted. We're brought right in. In fact, we're not just accepted, we're wanted. Thank you, Jesus, for making that possible. We praise you for who you are, God. For who you are. There's no God like you. No God like that. Praise you. Praise you, Lord. Lord, as we wait on you in your presence right now, we thank you for speaking. We thank you, Lord, for manifesting your presence. Lord, your word says that you're good to those who wait on you. So we just receive your goodness to us as we wait. This holy king delights in us, delights in you. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. This morning, his presence is so real. You can just feel it. You can just feel the essence of the Lord just settling down on you. I just feel like we need to rest in that just for a little bit more and just to receive from the Lord his presence, just that peace. In this time where everything is not so peaceful, that peace that passes all understanding is what we have in the Lord. And and what a richness. Just rest in the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. Praise you. It's like the deep calling to the deep. Open up the deep within you. Open up the deep within you. Open up the deep within you. For the Lord is calling. Lord is calling deep unto deep. Make a choice to open up the deep in your spirit, your soul. Let him in, let him in, let him in, let him into the depths of your being. Deep is calling unto deep. Deep is calling unto deep. Deep is calling unto deep. deep, unto deep. Open up your heart. is calling unto deep. Deep is calling unto deep. Deep is calling unto deep. 
I feel like there's some out there who might be listening to the to the live stream or the YouTube that they've never opened that the depths of their heart to the Lord. Maybe that you don't know Him. Maybe you just never experienced that. Maybe you've profess to be a Christian for many years, but God wants you to open up the very deepest places in your heart. He wants you to open that so he can come in. He's calling to you. He's calling out to you. It doesn't matter where you are, where you've been, what you've done. There's no thing that can't be forgiven. So listen, open up your heart and listen. I heard him saying, I have the keys. I have the keys. I am the one who opens every door, and I'm the one who closes the doors. So the doors are open. The doors are open. Come unto me, and I will give you rest. I will give you rest. The presence of the Lord is better than any high. Any high you've ever experienced in the world alcohol, drugs, pornography, whatever. The presence of the Lord is a greater high. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Praise you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Deep, deep is calling unto deep. Deep is calling unto deep. Deep is calling unto deep. Answer the call. the debris. Take away anything, Lord, that clouds our mind and distracts us from you. Wash us clean, Lord, of the defilement of the enemy. Thank you, Lord, that your ways are higher than our ways, and that your ways are always true and pure. Lord, there is none like you. Jesus gives all of us an invitation today, believers and unbelievers alike. He says, here I am. I stand at the door and I knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with that person and they with me. Lord, you welcome us into the table of the Lord, the table of the King. And we get to eat with you because we're family. So we open up. We open up the deep places of us. You stand at the door knock. We say, come in, Jesus. Yes. Come in. Come in. Yes. Come in. Lord, you're, this is your home. Make the table how you want it to be. I'll eat with you. Come in. Come in, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And so if you have your communion stuff this morning, let's take communion right now. Lord. Thank you that you set up the table of the Lord in us. And as we eat with you, and you eat with us, there is sweet fellowship, a sweet unity with you. 
We thank you for making yourself the meal. (laughs) Saying, this is my body given for you. This is my body. Eat of me. So we eat of you now, Lord. Thank you. Go ahead and eat. And we thank you, Lord, for the blood of the new covenant, the blood that speaks a better word than the old, that has paved the way between us and our Father in heaven. Thank you. There is no sweeter thing for us to drink than to drink in the blood of Jesus. Go ahead and drink. Thank you, Lord. Lord. As we continue to wait on him, if you feel like the Lord has a word for the whole body, or uh, scripture or something like that, then we can share that now. So does anybody have a, we already had a couple of senses really from the Lord. But Cheryl, you have something? And then there's one online that I'll read too. If you need a moment. Okay, I'll I'll just share the one online. So um, our friend Fiona from British Columbia, love you, glad you're here. Um, She saw a vision of the father digging up fresh soil so that he can plant new things in our hearts and in our lives. You're that fresh soil. So we receive that, Lord, from you. Yep. Come on in, Jesus. Come on in. Dig that stuff up. Fresh is good. Yeah. Thank you. This is from Romans 8, 26. In the same way the Spirit comes to us and helps us in our weaknesses, we do not know that what prayer we should offer or how to offer it as we should, but the Spirit himself knows our need and at the right time intercedes on our behalf with sighs and groanings too deep for words. And he who searches the heart knows what the mind of the Spirit is because the Spirit intercedes before God and on behalf of God's people in accordance with God's will. And we know with great confidence that God, who is deeply concerned about us, causes all things to work together as a plan for good for those who love God, to those who are called according to his plan and purpose. Thank you, Lord, for the confidence of your goodness to us. Lord, thank you that you have held nothing back of your heart or of heaven from us. It's all open. It's all there, available. Lord, we just don't want to hold anything of ourselves back from that. So thank you. Thank you for moving ever deeper into our lives, taking up more and more residence in our our spirits, in our beings. Lord, more of us belonging to you. But thank you 
that you have not withheld any part of who you are from us. You have given us your, your heart. You have given us your own son. You have not withheld anything. Thank you that we have all of you. Now take more of us. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In your name we pray, amen. I'm just hearing ollie ollie oxen free. Do you remember when you used to play hide and seek and some of the, you know, you go hide and then they go, ollie ollie oxen free. Yeah. If When you come to the Lord, that's what he says. Oh, you're freedom. Come on, yeah. in, come out of the hiding. Come out of the shadows to yeah. freedom. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, amen. Amen. There's more freedom than we've ever known still in front of us. <laughs> so we never, we never fully tap it out. Even in eternity, we'll still be looking, learning more. <clears throat> Thank you, Lord. Well, again, happy Mother's Day to all you mothers out there. We're so thankful for your lives, especially since some of you gave life to us. Um, <sighs> let's say all of you. Okay. Gave life to all of us, so thank you moms, moms that are in heaven right now. We honor them too, so thank you. Uh, um, there is a, um, for those of you who are here, there's a giving basket in the back. You can just give your, put your giving in there on your way out today. And for those of you who are online, there is an option for you to give online through our, our uh, website, uh, or you can mail in a check to our P.O. box, uh, and we'd be we just thank you for your faithfulness and your generosity. Um, I think one of the one of the signs of the Lord moving in this time and the Lord using the church of God in this time is when others are hoarding, we're being generous. We, we're moving in the opposite spirit. And, and so thank you for your ongoing generosity and just keeping that in perspective. It's actually a spiritual act when we give. It breaks that spirit of hoarding, the, the self-focused selfishness. Us giving is a spiritual act that breaks that. On our, that's trying to get our lives. It doesn't allow it to, to take place. It's just like worship is a weapon, giving is a weapon too. It has a spiritual component. I just learned that just now. That was just hitting me. Wow. Wow. I never even saw that like that before. That's amazing. So anyway, uh, thank you, Jesus. So uh, yeah. Wow. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for taking what we're giving, Lord, and using it spiritually to break strongholds of hoarding and selfishness over our neighbors, over this city and this region, over this nation, over this planet, Lord, that we as the people of God, the body of Christ on the earth, are moving in the opposite spirit. We are being generous to others, Lord. Even when it hurts us, we give generously and sacrificially as you lead us, Lord. Not just when it's a good idea, but when we hear you say so. So thank you, Lord, for leading us in our generosity, for, for being our chief example of generosity. Thank you, Lord. We love you. Take what we're giving and use it for your purposes. Multiply it out, Lord, that it would bring life everywhere it touches. In your name, amen. Yeah, that's good. Well, I'm going to have to chew on that some more. Yeah. Yeah. I don't normally do this, but I think this uh, ties in with what he, we were just talking about. Paul said to the Corinthians and the Corinthian church, but as you abound in everything, in faith, in speech, in knowledge, and in all diligence, and in your love for us, see that you abound in this grace also, which is the grace of giving. Mm. Yeah, there you go. It is a spiritual act. Yeah, thank you. Okay, now we've got some scripture to go with it. That's good. Okay, thank you. Yeah. 
All right, well, to tie us all in together here, because I know some of us are hit and miss on hearing the direction of where the Lord's been taking us and speaking and stuff. And so just to bring us all caught up here to one place, um, you know, through this time, the Lord's been really doing amazing things uh, on the earth. There's, you know, our church, uh, here we are in Post Falls, Idaho, and yet um, we're having 400 to 600 views of our services every week. Um, and in multiple nations besides. Uh, and so God's, and that's happening in many other churches too, by the way. God is just burst, bursting open the doors of getting his gospel out online. And what I've come to realize more than ever is where knocking on doors used to be the way to reach our neighbors and our friends is now online. It is through Facebook. It is through sharing uh, posts that are encouraging to you or sharing, you know, uh, this, this recording of the service. You share it. All this stuff is actually ways of reaching our friends for Jesus. And it, it's just a very different way than we've known before. But that's the reality of it. Uh, so <clears throat> rather than going door to door, we're going online on Facebook and um, YouTube and, you know, whatever else we can to share. So thank you for um, embracing this, this new way that the Lord is making known to the church all around the world, this new way of reaching the nations. So, I mean, somebody in a closed nation could be watching right now that wouldn't hear it in any other way, you know, so... It's, it's amazing what Jesus is doing. But uh, through this time, the Lord's been doing lots of different things. And last Sunday, uh, we, we asked the question, um, are you for him? Because there's times when God is just moves sovereignly. He just moves whether we decide to follow him or not, whether he decides to partner with us or not. He says, I'm doing this. Says the Lord, I am doing this. You either get on board or you get left behind. You know, and if you decide to get in the way, well, you're going to be moved aside. There's no stopping this. There are times when God moves that way. And there's times when God wants the partnership with his people. And a lot of times those times overlap. There's things that God's asking, wanting partnership in with us. And there's other things that he's doing where it's like, whether you're with me or not, I'm doing it. So, to understand that, that God moves this way. Uh, and the question that um, I felt like the Lord was posing to us this morning, last Sunday was, are you for him? Today is, who are you? Okay, who are you? And, and uh, the Lord really wanted to focus in on uh, love this morning and, because it's central to who he is. So, uh, last Sunday, I remember I shared a word I felt like and, and just had this picture of Jesus coming to each of us and hugging us. And as he did, heart touched heart. His heart touching our heart. And there was a transference of love, of an expansion of love inside of you and me. Okay, He's expanding our love. I mean, even this morning, we're talking about a deepening, deeper, Lord. And that, that's, that's a word right now. There's an expansioning, expanding, a deepening of, what, of the work that God's doing inside of us and thus through us too. He's expanding us to increase our capacity for more of who he is to flow through us. And that's wonderful. It means you're more free than you've ever been. It means you're more happy than you've ever been. It means that you're more at rest than you've ever been. It means you, ha you have more peace. There is, it, it means so much. And then it just oozes out of you. You know, it's a uh, one, of the, one of the things that, are, one of the things that uh, is amazing to me is that in John chapter 4, Jesus is talking to the, the woman in Samaria, and he, and, uh, he says, if you know who's, who you're talking to, you, you would 
if you would just drink, then rivers of living water would flow from within you. A drink becomes rivers. If you just drink from me, rivers of living water will come from inside of you. One drink of Jesus becomes rivers in us. There's a multiplication, there's an expansion when, when we take just that one touch and it oozes out. That's what I mean. It just blows out of us the rivers of living water from one little drink. That's amazing to me. Anyway, that was a side sermon. You're welcome. Uh, but <laughs> Jesus is embracing us and our hearts are being expanded. Uh, today, I'm talking to moms. Yes, but I'm also talking to dads. I'm talking to grandmas and grandpas. I'm talking to believers. I'm talking to people who have not yet believed in Jesus Christ, that there is something available for you to give your life to today. So let's start by turning to 1 John chapter 4, all right? And these are going to be familiar scriptures for you. I want to bring out some things, though, that the Lord showed me that are new, new uh, to, to my understanding. And... <clears throat> And will speak to you a truer identity than what you came with today. Which means that some of the false identities that we came in with today are going to be cut off. Okay? And it's going to keep happening. Okay? The Lord, that's part of Passover, is a cutting off of false identities and embracing new identity, okay? Just like the Israelites, slaves to free, okay? So there's a, there's, we're going to see that keep happening in this time frame because the church has embraced a true Passover this year, which was prophesied. So here we are in it, and this is some of the outworkings of it, okay? So 1 John chapter 4, we'll start reading in verse 16, I'm going to read it out of the Passion Translation. Uh, it says, uh, We have come into an intimate experience with God's love, and we trust in the love He has for us. God is love. Those who are living in love are living in God, and God lives in them and through them. Okay, so you, you know this statement, God is love, right? There. There's not many statements in Scripture that just says it so straightforth like that. God is good. God is love. When you look at what love is and, the, and, and you want the clearest definition of love, it's God. If you were to look lo love up in the dictionary, it just should just, should just say God. <laughs> That's... It's his definition. It's who he is. It's how he flows. It's how he lives. It's, it's, the, it's how he thinks. He's a loving God. So everything he does flows through love. Everything. Judgment flows through love. Wrath flows through love. And that's another topic for another day. But... Let me just say this, that judge, the point of God's judgment is to remove everything that hinders love. Okay. First John 4, so 416, God is love. And we've shared before how love, the word agape is a combination of two root words, agu and peo, which means to lead, to rest. So his love, one of the most beautiful pictures of his love is, is a love that leads us to rest. If you really think about that, it's very true. When you are fully loved and you know you're fully loved, okay, because you are fully loved, but for us to know we're fully loved, to live fully loved, think of how freeing that is. You now have no need to try to find approval from anyone around you or from God because you are loved fully. You, how much rest would that bring you? Oh, you know, besides that, and I'm going to touch on this a little bit later, but perfect love casts out all fear, all fear. 
what would your life look like if there was not one ounce of fear in it? Yeah, that's the idea. You can rest in the, that kind of love brings you to rest because you're not fearing. You're not trying to find approval anywhere or from anyone. Think about that. You are led to rest. That's what his love does. It's amazing. Now, he's the one that the, the love came from him. We did not have it within ourselves. It, he, we love because he first loved us, right? So this is the perfect love. This is the unconditional love. Now, look at verse 18, okay? Uh, love never brings fear, for fear is always related to punishment. But love's perfection drives the fear of punishment far from our hearts. Whoever walks constantly afraid of punishment has not reached love's perfection. So, I think about this. Fear has a lot to do, it goes hand in hand with suspicion, okay? But also with cynicism. When we have fear, we have a suspicion, particularly toward God, a suspicion that, well, he's not quite as good as he says he is. He could, he could do something to me that is not good. He could punish me in some way, he could make me sick in some way to teach me perseverance or some kind of character trait. He could cause this financial difficulty so that I would learn to trust in him more. You know, and that sounds like there's, a, there's suspicion there, there that he could be a capricious God. He could be a God that could change from being really good in this amazing time of my life and now now later I'm in this hard time of my life and he's different now than he was then. And we get the suspicious, the suspicion that he's not the same, that somehow he changed. And, and that's what fear does. Fear drives a suspicion about God, a suspicion about others and your motive. What's your motive? Why are you doing this? What, you know, I'm suspicious of what's driving you, what, why, why you're, what you're thinking, what you're doing, you know, and there's a, a suspicion, which is fear, okay? There's a cynicism too that says, well, you know, I'm just going to, I'm just, I'm cynical that God will take care of me. I'm cynical that God will uh, always provide. I'm cynical that God will heal because I'm making a belief in my own life. I'm making a belief or a doctrine out of what I haven't seen him do. Okay, so I've made a belief out of what I haven't seen him do. I have, I, I've prayed for people and they haven't gotten healed, so I believe that God doesn't heal or that God doesn't always heal or that it's not God's will to heal. And so I make a doctrine, a belief about God that is based on what I didn't see him do, even though he says differently about himself. And I get a cynicism. I get cynical about God. And, I, and, and, and then... You know, many of us, we've been wounded by other people, by people in our families, by people in church, church families, church leaders. We've been wounded in some way and sometimes in the past. And the woundedness, if it doesn't get healed, turns into that cynical, the cynicism. I, I, I expect that I'm going to be hurt by somebody else. And, and so, I, so I'm constantly keeping a guard up. Yeah, I constantly keep a wall up because I'm expecting to be hurt. And when we're doing that, we're putting our faith in the wrong thing. We're putting our faith in the fact that we're going to get hurt <laughs> rather than our faith in the Lord to heal, to restore, to cover. So I want to live with my heart wide open. Now, not to say I don't have boundaries with people, you know, the healthy ones, but I want to live with my heart open to be like, okay, I'm allowing, because love, love allows 
for me to be hurt. It just does. It's because I keep my heart open. But if I'm not keeping my heart open, then I'm not, I'm not operating in, all, in that fullness of love. It's just not having its way in me. Fear has to do with punishment. So there's a suspicion that we'll be punished. There's, and when we feel like we've been punished, then we're cynical. And it, but it all comes back to that fear. But perfect love casts out all the suspicion, all the cynicism toward others, toward God, casts it all out. Okay? Fear tries to lie to us that God's love is actually conditional. That's what it does. That his love is, it has strings attached. You have to behave a certain way or think a certain way, do certain things, whatever it is, or you'll be punished. And fear lies to us about that. But perfect love comes in and says, uh, fear was lying about me. I'm not really that way. I'm perfect. And I love you fully. Love lives with his heart wide open. Doesn't God live that way? His heart's wide open to us. He doesn't withhold. He doesn't question your motives when you come to him. He's not cynical about planet Earth. He's wide open. So, we've said God is love. So, in that regard then, if we looked at 1 Corinthians 13, the chapter that describes love, then it's also a chapter that describes God. So I want to read 1 Corinthians 13, starting at verse 4. And instead of saying love is patient, love is kind, I want to put God in every place where it says love. Okay? God is patient. God is kind. God does not envy. He does not boast. He is not proud. He does not dishonor others. He is not self-seeking. He's not easily angered. He keeps no record of wrongs. He does not delight in evil, but he rejoices with the truth. He always protects, always trusts, always hopes, and he always perseveres. God never fails. That's who he is. That was NIV. Yeah, North Idaho, NIV. Yeah, North Idaho version. There you go. Uh, so, yeah, love never fails. God never fails. Now, if we're to look again at 1 John 4, okay, I want to bring... This, this point real home to us here. Look at verse 17. Well, no, let's look at verse 16 again. It says, God is love. Those who are living in love are living in God, and God lives through them. By living in God, love has been brought to its full expression in us. By living in God, love has been brought to its full expression in us so that we may fearlessly face the day of judgment, because all that Jesus now is, so are we in this world. So right here, when, it, when Scripture is talking about God being love, Scripture is also expanding on that to say, because God is love, and we are one with Him, we're in union with him. We are intimately and united with love. And in fact, not only that, but we are love. 
You are love. Now, I'm not saying you're God, <laughs> okay? But I'm saying that who he is, you have become us also. It says right there, all that Jesus now is, so are we in this world. Jesus is love. You are now love. In this world. You are love. Okay. And this was what was hitting me yesterday. I was like oh my gosh. I did never see that before. I am love. And in fact go ahead and say that to yourself right now. I am love. Yeah. It's because he first loved us. We didn't get there because somehow we earned it. You know or, or made found it. We, we got it because of Jesus. Moving in. Yes, I am love. You are love. You are love. That's who you are. When you say yes to God, when you say yes to God, love moves in and you become like him. More and more to be like him. Okay, as he is, so are we in this world. He is love and so are we. It's right there in the context. It's all right there. You are love. As long as he's in us and we're in him, we abide in him, we are love. That's how it goes. Now, love has its full expression in us. And that's, that's also from right there. In Ephesians 3, verses 16 and 17, Paul is praying for the church in Ephesus. And he, part of the prayer he, he starts by saying, I pray that you be strengthened with might in your inner being. And then the next part is he, he starts praying about love. And he says, and I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may know, with, together with all the saints, how great the love of God is, the width, the length, the height, and the depth of his love, and to come to know this love that is beyond knowing. And, and he goes on, but... The, the point that I want to bring out is he said right at the beginning, and you being rooted and established in love. He's saying this is already a fact about you. You are rooted and established. It's a picture of a plant, a tree. It's taken, not only taken root, but it's well established. It's not going to be shaken around. It's not going to be pulled out. It's established. You are established in love. Okay, And then he says, look, so that you may have power to know something that's beyond knowing. To know the width, length, height, and depth of his love. And the way I like to picture it is that his love is a whole planet. Okay, Imagine planet Earth is all love. The whole thing is love and you're planted in it. And, and he's like, I, he's praying that you would know the whole planet. How easy is it for just, if you were the only one on this planet, <laughs> to know everything about it? You don't. You can't. That's the whole thing. Love is just so massive, so huge. Even now, scientists don't know everything about our planet. They don't know what's at the core of planet Earth. They don't even know all the creatures in the sea yet. And we've been here for a long time. And there's a lot of us looking at all this stuff and they're still not figuring out everything. It's a great picture of how massive love is. You are rooted and established in love and there's width, length, height, and depth to explore, to take in. You'll never get to the end of love because it's ever expanding like this universe, like God is. He is, you will never get to the bottom of him. And same with love, we'll never get to the bottom of it. But we are love. God has made us in his image. And part of that image is that we're able to handle the fullness of love within this frame. That's part of our image. We can actually house God. There's nothing in the creation that can. There's nothing that can in creation. But you were made to be able to do that. You were made able to house love himself. Yeah, it's crazy. It's amazing. So now, 
let's go back to 1 Corinthians 13 and let's put us in there. Okay? And this is going to be, <laughs> as we read through, like it, it happened for me yesterday, I was feeling convicted in parts because I'm like, I, I don't see that so much in me. I, I, I know I need to work on that area. But as we read with this description of love and who you are, this is where I'm talking about where false identities are going to begin cut, getting cut off of you. Because this is speaking a true identity of who you are. Because you are love. Because you are united with love. Okay? Now, 1 Corinthians 13, 4. And I'm just going to put in I am. All right? Because we're speaking about ourselves. I am patient. <laughs> well, we didn't get very far, did we? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. As he is, so are we in this world. So let's go for it, all right? This, so we're, we're prophesying this over ourselves, all right? God is in the habit of calling things that are not as though they were. So that's what we're doing. We're doing the same thing. We're calling things that are not as though they were because when we speak it, it creates it. Okay? So we're speaking along with the Spirit of God right now. Okay? I, we'll try this one again, okay? Uh, I am patient. I am kind. I do not envy. I do not boast. I am not proud. I do not dishonor others. I am not self-seeking. I am not easily angered. I keep no record of wrongs. I do not delight in evil, but I rejoice with the truth. I always protect. I always trust. I always hope. I always persevere. I never fail. In my love. Yes. Yes. That is your true identity. And anything as we are reading that said, no, you're not. No, you're not. No, you're not. Those are false identities speaking to you because they have a voice and they're speaking to you trying to tell you something that you're not when God has said that's who you are you are love you're united with me as I am so are you in this world and I am love and so are you I am peace and so are you We can talk about other scriptures too. That you are clothed with Christ. That you are one with him. And everything that he is, we are too. But faith, hope, and love, the greatest of these is love. And that's where God is really honing in on. It's love that we be people. I am a person not only who loves, but is love. See, Christ isn't just an example for us. He's an example of us. So Lord, thank you. Lord, this is just more good news. We think we have it figured out and then you just blow up a whole nother thing that says, look, here's more good news. This is more of what you received when you gave your life to me. So Lord, we embrace right now the true identity 
of who you are and of who we are. You are love that leads to rest. And we, because of being one with you, are also love. And you have given us everything we need to lead this world to rest. To lead our friends and our families to rest, that they would be at rest around us. It's already in us. We are rooted and established in it. It's already there. Thank you for the power of your love that casts out all fear. Fear cannot remain in me because I am love. I am with God, one with Him. He is love, I am love, and fear cannot be here. Fear cannot be in me. So false identities, identities saying that, I'm fe- that I have fear, that I'm fearful, that I'm prone to fear, that's a false identity, get out. Ones that say that, fe- uh, identities that say that I am impatient or that I'm unkind or that I keep a record of wrongs or that I am, uh, I am, um, I am quick to anger or I dishonor others or that I am prideful or that I enjoy bad, I enjoy sin, I enjoy evil, uh, that I have a hard time trusting, that I have a hard time hoping, that I'm a failure. These false identities, we cut you off right now in the power of love. In the power of love. Because love has a width, length, height, and depth to it. It is not something that is weak. It is something that is huge and powerful. And it's in us. So, Lord, we, we partner with the, with the God that is love, who is living inside of us right now, the Spirit of God, to speak a cutting off of the false identities and now a living out of the true identity of who we are as ones who are love. We are not just loved, but we are love. Thank you. Lord, for who we are and who you made us to be because of being one with you. Thank you that you have held nothing back, but you have opened up everything to us, Lord. Just as the father said to the older son, everything I have is yours. In the parable of the prodigal son, he said, everything I have is yours. And that's what you say to us. Every ounce of love that you have is ours. Every ounce of who you are and the fullness of your peace and of your kindness and the fullness of your goodness and your joy is ours because as you are, so are we in this world. Lord, thank you for what we have and what's available and we receive it in faith and we know where it's going to take eternity to unpack. But we're thankful that it's there. And we receive it, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We declare that we are love and you are love. Praise you, Jesus. If you're listening online right now, this is available to you. Open your heart up to Jesus Christ. He is love. Open your heart up right now and give your life to him. Just pray this, Jesus, I invite you into my life. I invite you to move in Take up residence and be love in me. And Lord, lead me to rest where I am not carrying suspicions. um, I'm not uh, carrying cynicism anymore. I'm not carrying fear. I'm actually being led to rest. To be at rest. I'm not looking for approval anymore. I'm just being at rest in you because I'm fully accepted fully loved. I am fully wanted by you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for coming into my life, forgiving me of all my sins, cleansing me, washing me, and making me one with you, that I'm in the family of God now. Thank you, Jesus. If you made that decision today, 
We want to rejoice with you and celebrate with you because that's what heaven's doing right now. And uh, let us know. Message our church. Uh, email us, whatever. Let us know that you made that commitment. We would love to partner with you to help you grow in your relationship with Jesus. But Lord, we thank you for all the good that you are doing right now all across the planet Earth, Lord. And raise up your church, your sons and daughters all over the world to be love, Lord, to let love have its way in us, through us, Lord, because it's who we are. It's our true identity from you. Thank you, Lord. We love you. We praise you. We thank you. Amen. Amen. So, yeah. So, uh, there's a Mother's Day gift for all you moms. We love you. And uh, make sure to grab your gift on the way out. Anybody uh, local who's watching from our church family, feel free to swing by the church building in the next hour, uh, hour and a half, and we'd love to give you your gift. Uh, so, anyway, be blessed. Be, be who you are already in Christ. Yeah. And we'll see you as soon as we can again. Okay. Love you.